the Security Council recall a resolution 165 and all other previous resolutions concerning Sudan. The position of the U.S. was to negotiate with the Chancha Reed, but now I'm looking at the footage. It completely shows they are not supposed to be negotiated with. The government is not in support of the Chancha Reed militia, but there are rumors going around, not only in Africa, but all over the world, that the government is strongly supporting the Chancha Reed militia. What is the government doing to prove that it's not supporting such militia? Thank you, Mr. President. Russia strongly believes that negotiation is cooling the hearts of the Janjaweed and will fully cool the hearts of the Janjaweed. Negotiations, as Sudan believes, is the best way. The sending in of more troops to Sudan will only worsen the case, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. President. I second this motion because I believe that we've come to our final consensus. Thank you. One to ten, I would rate um, the whole exercise the range of about eight. Um, granted that the kids ex express themselves very well, they showed good understanding of the issues, um, they followed very good meeting protocols, and I think it's amazing to see young kids like that um, engaging on such uh, international issues with such passion, and uh, I think that uh, they did very well. I would rate uh, very highly on all the students' uh, participation. Uh, of course, some students uh, spoke up a lot more than others, but uh, in the general scheme of things, as in the real United Nations General Assembly debates, not because some students, some delegates spoke the most, would confer the most points for that student. So um, overall, I think that there was a very good balance between some of the larger nations, like US and China, who spoke up very much so, and that's very much uh, to their credit, that's their country's position. But also some of the smaller countries, uh, Ethiopia, Uganda, Japan, Lebanon, they also participated uh, very fully. And so I would rate very high, uh, say eight out of 10 for students' part participation. Lifelink has done a very good job in getting the students together to discuss on issues, especially on Sudan, which may not necessarily be very interesting to the, uh, to the local Ghanaian. And these children were able to do a uh, level of research to discuss it. On a scale of 1 to 10, I would say that I will give them a 7, being that they are a little bit above average, but there's still room for improvement. So. Seven is okay for me. Its participation was good. Delegates seemed very interested and excited about the process and the, there was extensive familiarity with what was required of them and I thought that was impressive. The position of the U.S. was to negotiate with the Chancha Reed, but now I'm looking at the footage. It completely shows they're not supposed to be negotiated with. Negotiations, as Sudan believes, is the best way. The sending in of more troops to Sudan will only worsen the case, Mr. Chairman. And I believe that negotiation will work because soft words soften hard hearts. So they will soon yield to negotiation. We have gone too easy on them. Therefore, now is the time to take things on a serious note in order to warn them and make them stop. I think I'll give the participants um, nine and a half. Nine and a half because the research that went on for the individual participants to come up with their findings, to document the findings, prepare their position papers, and present the position papers was not easy. And each one of them went through it thoroughly, and the presentations were just excellent. I wanted to know whether in the draft resolution that we are writing right now, is there any um, position or any statement that encourages the, de um, um, the deployment of truth in Sudan. If there is, it should be revised. No. As now should be trained in the name of the aim, be able to negotiate. Then just listen so that you can amend the test.
I think the delegates did exceptionally well. Um, looking at the way they discussed the issues, the, um, they brought themselves into, into the whole equation. They discussed the issues with passion. They were articulate. They respected all the meeting procedures and protocols. And I think that on a whole, their confidence level uh, was up there. And I expect that if they go to New York with this kind of attitude, they're going to win a lot of awards. And I have no doubt that Ghana is going to fly very high and take any of these kids that we're going to select. Um, these kids haven't been to the United Nations before and I will say that before, I can comfortably say that before this program, um, I don't think they were very much interested in the United Nations procedures, but you could see that um, they kind of exhibited some of the rules and um, on a whole I think I'm comfortable with them. It's okay. Mr. President, the Security Council recalling resolution 165 and all other previous resolutions concerning Sudan. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise on the point of information. As the delegate of Sudan stated, the government is not in support of the Janjaweed militia. But there are rumors going around, not only in Africa, but all over the world, that the government is strongly supporting the Janjaweed militia. What is the government doing to prove that it's not supporting such militias? Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, distinguished delegates from countries, on the rules of procedures, I'll give the participants a 9 out of 10. Uh, they really went through the rules and applied the rules during the deliberations that went on throughout the episodes. And they did very well at apply, uh, applying the rules. Thank you, Honorable Chair. I move that we adjourn this meeting to move into and moderated caucus to come up with a draft resolution for solving this problem. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise on the point of information on draft resolution one. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I would, um, in, the, in the draft resolution two, they stated that education and building of schools can, is a way of achieving peace. I also like to ask the sponsors and signatories of that de, of that resolution of that de, draft resolution how that can be able to revive the labor force of the country since most of them have fl fled to other countries. Thank you. I believe that the students have had uh, extensive training through a uh, LifeLink and other uh, sponsors and so uh, and they also did a lot of research online on United Nations procedures in terms of writing resolutions and amendments and uh, points of order and so I was very impressed with that as well. Um, although during the middle of the debate um, a lot of points were raised without referral to points of order or points of information so I would like to see a little bit more of that covered and so I, I would rate around 6 out of 10 for that. What the government of Sudan is actually doing is that it is holding talks with the leaders of the Janjaweed militia to help stop this, to, to try to come to a compromise. Mr. President, I move that we vote on the draft resolution one, because we've debated a lot and, we think, and I think we should vote on the resolution. The rules of procedure was okay. Delegates were quite familiar with the rules of procedure. They appear to have studied it thoroughly and for people who are not been to the UN before or who were at their age 14, 13 and 15, I thought it was impressive too. Thank you Mr. President. I second this motion because I believe that we've come to our final consensus. Thank you. Thank you Mr. President. Russia strongly believes that negotiation is cooling the hearts of the Janjaweed and will fully cool the hearts of the Janjaweed. Thank you Mr. President, fellow delegates, an integrated approach to stability in Sudan, linking peace in Darfur to the preparation for the general referendum on the future of Southern Sudan. Um, some of the challenges, some of them were, um, the topic area Watching it from the beginning, I was a bit lost, and so trying to understand their position, where they are coming from, was a bit um, difficult for me. So I would, I would have preferred if a little background information on Sudan was provided, though we read that a lot, but 
um, I would have expected the basis on which the arguments would have started so that it will be very comfortable for me to follow them as we go along. I think my most difficult, uh, the hardest challenge I faced in uh, doing this um, assessment was that all in candidates that I had to assess did very well. And so it was very difficult for me to pick even five, but then I had to do, um, I had to do the assessment and so uh, it was quite critical in that sense that I looked at so many different things. Uh, even though they all like they all had a good use of the uh, rules of engagement and all that, I had to now look at how they address the issues, the passion that they brought to the to the to the table, their body language, gesture, poise, and others. And I think that was uh, how I had to overcome it. But it was really difficult choosing from amongst these kids. Uh, they are all talented kids, I must say. Right, as a judge uh, who did not have a full one-on-one -on -one interaction with the students. I saw students all through electronically through the CD and DVD media and so it was a little bit difficult to gauge some of the students uh, if they haven't spoke, uh, spoke up during the debates because uh, a lot of times students would have very active engagements outside of formal debates and opening speeches like during the caucuses and during the breaks. And so I would like to have seen some more of the interactions with the students from some of the countries that uh, traditionally they don't really speak up during the actual debates. And secondly, um, we just had a very uh, good variety of students from all different back backgrounds and it was very difficult for a judge to differentiate some of the top ones. We had a very, very strong candidates. So I believe that uh, uh, our, uh, you know, uh, Basically, judging criteria reflected the fact that the bars were set very high, and so there are multiple candidates who have met uh, very high uh, accomplishments. The major challenge faced as a judge in selecting uh, the winner of this competition, all 17 participants were excellent, I must say. And it was very, very difficult to get any fault. That was my major challenge, to be able to identify faults with the various presentations that went on. But we worked hard, we had our templates, and at the end of the day, we have been able to select a winner for the competition. No real challenges, but I thought that if judges could engage directly with delegates, it would have helped. What, uh, in my case, I saw them on, on video, and even though I looked at it critically, it would have been nicer to engage with them directly. It may have brought up one or two of the positives. And so next time I'll be looking forward to that. I was, I was quite impressed with the delegate from France. Um, I think that he speaks like a diplomat, he acts like one. He has good poise, good uh, good diction, um, expresses himself very, himself very well, uh, has a good understanding and grasp of the issues, and he was able to articulate that in a very convincing manner to bring um, um, other delegates to his camp. I think that the delegate for Sudan also did fantastic. He, he, he was in strong contention, in my view, for the first top position. He did exceptionally well uh, in trying to put the issues across. He spoke very well, was articulate, he had also a good understanding of his own country that he was representing and he brought many other dimensions that were not in the discussions onto the table to sound very convinced and I think it was quite good. The delegate from um, Mexico, uh, she, she did exceptionally well, she also displayed very the sterility of the issues, he, she, she was very um, uh, passionate about it and uh, she was able to speak about it in a very eloquent manner, she was very confident. And so I think these three, um, there was another one, the, the, the delegate from the UK, uh, he, was, he was phenomenal, he was phenomenal. And I think that um, out of these four, with one from Japan, Japan was quite good as well, uh, any of these uh, will be a very good um, representative for, for Ghana in this upcoming UN World Conference. My general observation is that that's a plus. It's a good initiative. They did extremely well. They were very vocal, um, very optimistic. They were very, some of them were very, very confident. Particularly, um, let, me, let, me, let me tell you who I think 
did well or the, the group that I think did very well. Before then, credit to Sudan. This is a topic area that we are not, it's a, it's a little bit boring. It's not very vibrant, especially for children. And Sudan picked it up, did a little bit of research. He could have done more, but um, his confidence level and his presentation were not that vibrant that's as one would expect. So a plus to Sudan, all right. But my best three would be UK, very diplomatic. His presentation, his demeanor, the way he presented himself was very good. And, but China did very well. I like the way China was kind of coming in after every presentation, asking questions, uh, trying to get responses and feedback, positive feedback from the Sudan ambassador. Um, I think he's okay to go. When really polished up, he can do very well. And he has that kind of charisma to take things forward. But my favorite will be Japan. This is a lady, she was very, very eloquent. Um, she needs a little bit grooming and she will come up very well, but her eloquence really took me by surprise. And she did marvelously well. Her presentations were good. Her questions were good. Interruptions were good. And I think I'll give it to Japan. And let's boost the ladies a bit. I thought the delegate from France was excellent. He was in absolute control of what he was saying. And he raised an issue about aid, which really is quite complicated even in international relations. The way in which he articulated the issue of aid and the familiarity that he showed with the pros and cons of it completely impressed me. And uh, his public speaking skills, his camera skills, I thought that he was my top most delegate, the delegate from France. Yes, I, I believe that, uh, the, as I said before, some of the countries that uh, traditionally speak up a lot, uh, as in they will the veto power, US, China, and UK, uh, they were very much on message in that they participated very uh, heavily in this resolution and I was glad to see that Sudan was put on the table and so Sudan as well as Ethiopia uh, which is also the home of the AU, African Union, they were able to present uh, their pers perspective from uh, Africa's perspective. Uganda is also another very good example. So we had a very good mix of countries that traditionally have been donor countries and traditionally uh, hold very strong positions on this issue as well as countries like Sudan who really is a target of these resolutions as well as some other African countries. And at the same time, uh, the, uh, the Security Council also has uh, China and France and other countries that had, they have veto power as well. And they are also very much of active participants in this whole um, uh, UN assembly. So uh, I feel like there was a wide range, diverse array of opinions and everybody got to spoke up and students were very respective of each other's opinions and the moderator did a very good job of uh, trying to um, get everybody's voice be heard. On my comments on the delegates, I'll pick one delegate, the delegate from Japan. This young lady was not in intimidated by any means by her compatriots. She was articulate, she was bold, very confident, and she took the mantle did her research and was able to articulate her position during the entire program. And she's my pick. Another delegate that I'll pick from the entire competition uh, is the delegate representing France. This young man was also very, very confident throughout the program, very calm in his disposition, very eloquent in delivery, and was very firm making a point in almost all the, the uh, debates that went on. And I think his attributes are also admirable. My last pick will be the delegate from Sudan. A very calm person, very, very objective in his delivery, and was also very eloquent in the delivery. And I think I'll pick him as one of my admired delegates. Interesting. I, I think that uh, for pe people like us, we, we 
I have I have been through this kind of um, model conference and uh, debating and things like that in my high school days. And I think that uh, from benefit of hindsight, I think these are the things that have shaped me um, to where I am today. And uh, you carry a lot of these um, lessons, consciously or unconsciously, with you as you move along. And so I think it's, a, it's such an experience that every kid should have the opportunity to experience. Uh, it's a pity that we're concentrating mostly in Accra and a few uh, schools around here, but I think that if we're able to move it into the regions and the districts to be able to unearth such talents and potential because I think they're everywhere and uh, it has a, it goes a long way to help them to be able to reach out for the skies and I think it's important that we encourage such initiative and support it to, to bring much more laurels to Ghana. We need another Kofi Annan in the making. Uh, I've been part of the competition as a whole from its inception and I have just one word for, for, for the entire thing, excellent. This competition has given all the participants the opportunity to undergo a lot of thorough research into the topic and to go through the procedures and processes of research to come up with a written position paper. And this they've all done it excellently. So I just have one word, excellent. And it's a program that should be encouraged and many children should take active part and participate. If nothing at all, you learn how to find things out and present things and convince others to accept your position. Well, it looked like a well thought out program. I say congratulations to the organizers. Uh, they seem to have choreographed it and prepared it very well. Early days of my high school, when I was in the US, uh, I participated in all of the uh, Model United Nations competitions and. Uh, also in the district, in the state of Washington, and uh, eventually I became a coach to middle school Model United Nations uh, to teach middle school students how to write resolutions and uh, actually debate and to form opinions that are aligned with their respective countries and act diplomatically. And uh, now that you can see that my Model United Nations uh, experience has propelled me to study international affairs uh, in undergraduate and graduate school, uh, and uh, pursue a career, a very rewarding career in international affairs and diplomacy.